Good morning. Wonderful to see everyone as well. Before we stand up and shake hands, I've been asked to warn you that our first song is, um, well, in Becky's words, it's a doozy. So we are going to do our absolute best. And if it doesn't go well, well, at least we're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. And then we'll move on to the good hymns that we can actually sing later on. So we'll go ahead and stand and greet each other in the peace of the Lord and then do our best. testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple, more to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey. commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey. judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yes, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Let the of my mouth, O oh Lord, and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, is thy servant warned, and in keeping. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in him. Full of splendor and majesty is his work. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. Praise endures forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the well-being of the, uh, excuse me, for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to known is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Proverbs chapter 9 on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the high, highest places in, in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will, he will be wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual is from Psalm 39. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 6 to 21. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not associate with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as, a child, walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. Look carefully, then, how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the, of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence to Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Then the Jews disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, 
and I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe, and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and we invite the children to come forward at this time. Emmy, scoot over here so that everybody can. Ooh, okay, gonna reorient myself this way so I can talk to everybody. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, good morning. How's everybody doing? It's good to see all of you guys up here. So, did you guys have any big events happen this week? Yeah. Ooh. You seem excited, this side seems not as excited. So we'll go with the excited side. What, what happened this week that was big and exciting? Yes, sir. I got to go to a skate park and a water park. You got to go to a skate park and a water park. Okay, not quite what I was thinking. Let's, let's try over here. You guys got white pops. Um, big, really big event. A lot different than what was going on, say, you know, a couple weeks ago. Ben. You got new, okay. School. You guys all started school, or at least most of you started school, right? Now you see why last week I said you never ask the question you don't know the answer to, right? Yes, ma'am. Is that fun? Good. I'm glad. So you all, well, most of you, a big chunk of you started school. And you guys are all super excited about that. Yes, sir. What? Well, we'll talk later, okay? So, um, so yeah, so you guys, a lot of you started school. So how is it? You guys having fun? You can sit down, bud. Yes, ma'am. You got the only man teacher in the whole school. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, so let's talk about, that's a great segue. Let's talk about your teachers. How are we to treat our teachers? Yes, sir. Like they're our family. Like they're our family, okay. Yes, sir, over here. With respect, good job. You get a high five. What's up? Love. With love and respect. Yeah, you guys both get high fives. You want a high five too? There we go. Good job. Yes, with love and you. Know, how about we just say everybody can have a high five at the end? 
Uh, so, with love and respect, that is exactly right. Why? Yes, sir? Because you don't like it when you love someone He does. He likes it when we show his love to other people. Yes, sir? Give hugs, that's a great way to show that you love your teacher, right? And what? And praise Jesus, exactly. So, so yeah, so, and we are told to, uh, in the fourth commandment, we're to respect those that God has put over us. That includes teachers, right? That we are to show them the respect because they are our leaders. Just like we show respect to our parents, to police officers, to everybody else that the Lord has put over us. You can sit right here. You can join me up here. Yeah. How's that? Good? So that's exactly right. We show them respect and we show them the love of Jesus. So those are two different things. Why would we want to show them the love of Jesus? I haven't heard much from the middle over here. Well, let me see. Yes. Yeah. No? Okay. Why would we want to? We talked about we show them respect because that's what we're commanded. Why would we show them the love of Jesus? Yes, sir. Because we believe in Jesus. Good job. Yes. Sure. What? Sure, sure, that's right. So yeah, so we show the love of Jesus because we believe in him and we want everybody else to believe in him. And the best way to do that is to show his love to everybody. So are you guys excited about school? Yeah. I agree with you. There's one over there going, nope, I'm, I, don't worry, that was me too. Uh, you only got, what, like 10 more years of it? Uh, would you guys join me in, yes, ma'am, just wanted to raise your hand, that's okay, would you guys join me in prayer, and if you'd repeat after me, dear Jesus, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us, and we thank you for our teachers that you have put over us. Help us to, f to follow your example and to um, respect those like, your, like our teachers that you have placed over us. We also pray that you would help us to show your love to all those around us. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you guys. You can head back to your seats now. Oh yeah. High five.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. When I teach adult new member class, I go in an order that sometimes people find odd. In the first class, we take a very, very brief view of all 66 books of the Bible, and then we take an even more brief look at the Book of Concord. Then immediately in the next two classes, we dive into commun- uh, baptism first and then communion before returning later on in the course to the Ten Commandments, the creeds, Lord's Prayer, and so on. But there is a method to my madness. For you see, I have never seen someone quit a church because we number the Ten Commandments a little bit differently than maybe some of our fellow brothers or sisters in Christ. I've never seen someone leave over the fact that we hold to the three ecumenical creeds. I mean, I'm sure this has happened at one time or another, but I have never seen it. However, I have seen people leave because we baptize babies. And I have seen people leave over uh, the fact that we preach and teach, as the Bible does, that Christ's body and blood is truly present in communion. On Vicarage, what kind of brought around this idea of starting with these hot-button issues, if you will, was on Vicarage, I watched a lady sit through six hours of new member class before suddenly realizing that her beliefs on communion didn't line up with ours. And I've had the same thing happen to me once or twice. So I get it out of the way early. And this is what we see Jesus doing in our reading today. For he hasn't instituted Holy Communion yet. And he won't for probably at least a whole another year if we look at the timelines. This is found only in John 6, or not only, but found in John 6, so fairly early on. Uh, but we see him not waiting till Holy Week or right before he goes to the cross to start teaching about communion. Instead, he starts teaching here about faith and Holy Communion. And for the last two weeks, those who are not his disciples have been grumbling. They grumbled the first week because he wasn't going to give them free food. Then they grumbled because of his teaching on faith, as we heard last week. But today they stop grumbling and they start disputing among themselves. They cannot believe that Jesus Christ is telling them that he is giving them his body and blood to eat and drink. They cannot believe that he would compare himself to the gift of manna given to their fathers and even to say that he is better than this gift. And they cannot believe that the Father in heaven had sent Christ to be their Savior. We use the word disputed because that's the the best translation of the Greek word. But rather than arguing among themselves whether what he says is true or not, they are in utter shock and disbelief about what Jesus is preaching to them. In the next paragraph, Christ our Savior doubles down on every one of those teachings. In verses 57 through 58, he says, As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. And from here on out, It's no longer the Jews who are in the synagogue listening to him that are grumbling or disputing among themselves, but now it's his own disciples that are grumbling. And unlike last week, verses 53 through 59, what we just read, are a clear teaching on communion. Every single verse In it, in every single verse, Jesus proclaims what uh, happens 
in this meal. We partake of his body and his blood. So the disciples are responding to this when they're grumbling and later on when they choose to leave. They are responding to this paragraph um, and not the previous discord on faith. And what's more, they are upset about it. Now the reason we bring this up is because if you read verses 65 or 64 through 66 with no context, it seems like there might be something else going on here. They say, but there are, uh, this is Christ speaking, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. Now, some people try and turn this around. They say that he, they're upset about him talking about communion, the upcoming rite of communion, eating and drinking Christ's body and blood. But it's this section that, uh, on faith that no one can come to the Father except through Christ, that really pushes them over the edge and causes them to leave. However, this isn't what's going on here. From verse 62 onward, Jesus is supporting his previous teaching and continuing to give us a foretaste of his betrayal, death, resurrection, and ascension. And so, many of the disciples... Not the twelve we think of, but the uh, others turn back from following him. Those who left were probably waiting for him to say something along the lines of, No, hold on, you didn't understand. What I meant was this, I meant this in a symbolic way. But Christ doesn't say this. Because they didn't mishear and he didn't misspeak. The promise and gift he is foretelling of here and institutes at the Last Supper is not symbolic. It is a remembrance of him, as he says, but it is so much more than that. As he teaches us here, it is his true body and blood shed on the cross for our salvation. It is truly in, with, and under the bread and the wine once the words of institution are rightly spoken over it. It is, once again, as Christ preaches here, one of the means of grace, the way we receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. And it is a meal of unity, uniting us with our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, and all that he has done for us in his death and resurrection. And it also unites us with our fellow believers here. For in taking it, we proclaim that we are united in our faith in Christ. And we are united in our belief of what the Bible teaches. And we are united in our belief in what this church preaches. So, to close, we have seen that because Jesus preaches about his body and blood in the upcoming rite of communion, some of the disciples walk away. But then, then we have our final section in which we get Peter's bold confession that we sung earlier. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. We echo these words literally when we sing them before the gospel, knowing that we will be fed by his teachings that we hear in his holy word. And we echo these words as we come to the table, knowing that we will be fed by his body and blood, truly in, with, and under the bread and wine. These words are a pure exposition of the faith that has been given and a pure display of all that we are taught in his 
holy word. Lord Jesus Christ, you have the words of eternal life and are the Holy One of God. So we pray, if you join me in prayer. O Lord, let us always say, as Peter did, you have the words of eternal life that we learn in your gospel and receive at your table. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand and confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, or Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with our Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have sent the great good shepherd who has had compassion on his flock. In his name we lift up our prayers for the family of God, for every nation, tribe, people, and language, and for all those who hunger for the true bread of life. Lord, in your mercy, grant us always, O God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of this congregation and our community, that many may embrace Jesus as the Christ and believe that he is the true bread of God who has come from heaven. Grant that we would never hunger or thirst for anything but Christ and his righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, we pray for your blessing upon all homes and schools, especially the schools, universities, and seminaries of our church. Bless all places where your people gather to teach and learn your word, and help us to remember that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We also pray for all of those who are returning to school, both here and far away. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over them as they they travel to their schooling, whether it be for a while or just for a day. Bring them home safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you place men in positions of authority for the sake of order. Grant wisdom to Joseph, our president, Gregory, our governor, our judges, those in law enforcement, including Mike Mirage and Mike Marby, and all who hold offices of public trust in our land, that they may not act for selfish gain, but serve according to, the, to your will for the benefit of all of your people. 
We also pray for Lucas Cantu as he serves in the United States Marine Corps. We ask, Lord, that you would watch over him and all who serve in our armed forces and military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bestow your power of healing upon the sick. Um, we pray for Maria Ripley, Merrick Hill, Kate Bartlett, Wayne and Layla, Tony and his family, Amy, Albert Swirlick, Nelson Zayas, and Walter Compton, that in accordance with your will, they may, be, they may give thanks to your name. Give your spirit of hope to the depressed, the lonely, and those who mourn for the deaths of loved ones, especially for the family and friends of Le Lena Carlson. But we also pray that you would be with all who need your care in ways that are not medical, especially or including Jonathan Reeves. Strengthen their faith and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also give you thanks for the many, many blessings that you bestow upon us. We thank you for Venice's successful surgery, for the birth of Beverly Ann, the great granddaughter of the Crows, and for the 88th birthday of our brother in Christ here, Cliff Brown. We pray that you would continue to bless both of these with, with many, many more happy birthdays. We give you thanks for all of the, the marriages that you set as an example to us, especially for Tracy and Paula, who are celebra celebrating their anniversary this weekend. We also take time to thank you for all the things that are on our hearts that make us joyful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, your Son assures us that his flesh is the true food and his blood the true drink, that those who feed on him will live forever because of him. By your Spirit, prepare our hearts to welcome him as he comes to us in this Holy Supper, that we may rejoice in his promises and depart in his peace. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Glad to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner... After they had supped, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is, um, sh- uh, this is my blood shed in the forgiveness for all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever, Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given unto death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink
body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for you.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen, amen, amen. As always, thank you for being here. I don't see anybody else needing to make announcements, which is good because I've got a boatload to go through. Um, we'll go, we will go in, in as best order as I can remember. So Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday is the 21st, 
Normally we would be having communion, but we have a special treat. Classic Voice, which is a subset of the Baylor Singing Seniors, will be here performing. Um, we're looking forward to that, and we hope that you can come and join us. This Wednesday is also the beginning of rehearsal for choir and ensemble, and we have council. So if you got something going on before or after, just come a little early or stay a little late and enjoy the beautiful music. For those of you who are following along with the story, we will be hearing about Esther, the, uh, the odd book of the Bible that does not mention God once in its six or eight chapters. So that's going on. That's all going on on Wednesday. Then on Sunday, we have even more excitement because this upcoming Sunday is our backpack blessing. So instead of having a children's message, we will invite any students, teachers, uh, lifelong learners, anybody who wants to come, bring your backpacks up here. We will bless them and then we have a little, uh, a small gift. And we won't be having Bible study that day either because we will be doing our normal rally day events, which means free donuts as well as hearing about um, all the, the classes that the students are going to and, and graduating them into those next classes. So that is going to be uh, great. Um, looking a little bit further out, seeing that we're, can you believe we're already ha over halfway through September or um, August? I'm thinking you'll understand that here in a second because I'm looking at the beginning of September and we have a lot going on then as well. September 4th, which is a Wednesday, we will be starting confirmation because our 8th graders, uh, we went ahead and confirmed them as well as our, well, our 7th graders last year, 8th graders now. We will just be having a 7th grade class and Martin and I are going to be teaching that so it should be quite a lot of fun. At least for us, we're, gonna, we're looking forward to it. And Men of Peace will be starting up, I believe we're going to start on the um, second Sunday because the first Sunday is uh, the day before Labor Day. And so we figure a lot of you will be out of town. So we're going to start on the second Sunday and Martin has graciously agreed to host us at least for a little while. You know, Kelsey has uh, just had a baby, so we're going to let her take it easy and not worry about a bunch of guys showing up to do Bible study. So we're going to be at Martin's Man Cave and we will, have, um, we will have the address and all that sort of good stuff for that. And I, I don't remember the date, but it'll be the, oh, September the 8th. That's why you write these things down. So that'll be September the 8th. So please uh, think about joining us should be a good time as well. This year we are going to study the, um, what's called the Augsburg Confession, which is part of the Book of Concord. Uh, then also on that September 8th, be on the lookout because we are going to have, be having our new members potluck. Any, any other announcements? I think that was, oh, Rosalind. Awesome, thank you. Anything else? All right, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.